Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live Lunch and Learn with the Center for African American Health. Um, we want to encourage everyone to register to vote ahead of the 2020 election next month. Uh, please don't wait until the last moment um, and assume that you're registered. Verify your status today. You can do this by visiting the Colorado Secretary of State's voter information page at sos.state.co.us. The, another um, note here, um, the Center for African American Health wants to help uplift uh, every voice in this election. So we are hosting another drive through voter registration event this Saturday, October 10th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the parking lot of our building, located at 3350 Hudson Street, Denver, Colorado, 80207. Also, we are hosting another free COVID-19 testing event on Friday, October 16th, from 9 a.m., to 1 p.m. in the parking lot of our building on Hudson Street. Um, last reminder before we begin, I want to also say, um, you know, just a reminder, 2020 census is still open. Um, complete your census online by visiting www.2020census.gov. Um, as we wait for a few more people to join us, I'm gonna drop some links here in the chat just to ensure that you guys will be able to get directly to some of the resources I just cited. Everybody's having a great day today. So, I do wanna encourage folks to feel free to drop any comments they might have for today's session in our Facebook chat here. All right, so uh, let's begin. Um, I'd like to introduce myself and tell a little bit about the Center for African American Health. My name is Eric Moore. I'm the research and evaluation coordinator. Um, I do have um, a few internal and external projects that I work on, um, mainly around data evaluation and learning. Um, but aside from those responsibilities, I managed to be here at Mile High Project. It's an advocacy project that we designed to help, um, to help us and other community serving organizations understand the experience of Black and African American Coloradans and to amplify their voice to create community informed trainings, health programs, and communication messages. Um, one thing you could do, um, learn more, visit us, and you can also join at our website here at www.behermilehigh.org. Uh, for, for those of you who may, not, may be unfamiliar with the work of the Center for African American Health, we have been in the community for more than 20 years with a focus on commitments and commitments to improving the health and well being of the African American community. Uh, we do have programs that are centered around children, older adults, and everyone in between. Uh, two examples I'd like to highlight are um, our Workforce Readiness Program, which works with adults and youth to give them job readiness and networking skills, and also our Virtual, virtual Crisis Counseling Program, uh, which helps provide mental health resources and navigation to folks who are in need. Uh, and as a general resource that we do, um, we do have a community resource navigation service uh, that will help you find what you need to achieve, uh, what you need to achieve your highest level of health and well-being. Uh, these could be a variety of things um, from shelter to food, to physical safety, to educational and, 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 and employment needs. So as we move through today's session, um, again, please feel free to um, drop any questions in the comment area here on Facebook and we will address them if time permits. Um, last week, if you joined us um, during our, our lunch and learn, we discussed the power of community engagement and the strengths found within our individual networks. Today, we'll think about what health and well-being means to us and how we can view data as a tool to learn more about the systems and resources available to us in our communities so that we can act and influence others to create positive changes. I have prepared a, a PowerPoint for us today, so let me get that loaded up so that you guys can be able to see here. Okay. So perfect. Um, so should be able to see my PowerPoint here. Um, so this survey um, is going to be mainly around um, this. I'm sorry. This uh, presentation will be mainly around the survey that we conducted back in June 
around health priorities of the African American community. Uh, one thing we wanted to look out for was just to understand what were some of the top priorities for folks and then also understanding the perceptions and the confidence they have around some of the things that influence our health, including institutions and other entities outside of ourselves. So we'll dive right in. For today's um, we, the outline, we'll go over some of the survey details. We'll also go over demographics, which will help describe the people who responded to the survey. We'll also look at some top findings um, from um, a few of the domains that we covered here and some reflection questions that we want to consider along the way. And then we'll wrap up with a, um, an opportunity that we have that's called Be Here Colorado. It's a advocacy and leadership training opportunity that we have that's part of the Be Heard uh, Mile High project. So it's something that we're very excited to, to tell you more about and we'll cover that at the very end. And then also just final page on how you can connect with us online and also by phone. So as far as survey details, um, the survey we conducted back at the beginning of June um, and it lasts, lasted almost just under two months worth, uh, two, two months long. Um, total respondents for the survey was 231 uh, people. Um, these are people who are um, able to access it within the Be Her panel and also um, access it through a community available link. The Be Her panel, again, Be Her project, um, we have 1,200 community members across the Denver metro area that give us information about uh, the experiences that they have around health and social justice issues. Um, we cover social determinants of health, so a lot of things we'll talk about education, transportation, we'll talk about stressors like racism and discrimination. Anything that really impacts health and well-being, we cover in these monthly surveys, um, giving us an opportunity to always have a communication channel with community and being able to use information and also provide some incentives for completing the surveys. From this particular survey, which we used to be her system to do, we had uh, received 185 respondents um, that identify as Black or African American. Again, this invite was sent out to the Be Her panel and then was expanded out to the center's email list and also partner organizations we work with. As far as the survey itself, there's five domains of questions that we covered. Um, first one is all issues, also known as kitchen table issues. So these are a variety of things. Um, doesn't have to necessarily be health related, although a lot are directly or indirectly connected to health. Um, but we covered that we also have health and healthcare, disease and risk factors, trust and perception in institutions, and confidence in influencing institutions. Uh, we're going to cover just the first three domains. Um, there's an opportunity that I'll mention at the end with the Be Here Colorado project that we'll talk about more detail around the data that we have, including all five domains here. So demographics, so let's jump into the respondents. This survey, just so you know, this, this event in, in particular is going to cover African-American respondents. Um, the leadership program is guided towards helping Black and African-Americans um, get into advocacy and leadership positions and get training along the way. So this survey is going to cover just the results from that cohort. So again, um, oh, and I, my apologies, I made a mistake here. Total respondents, again, 185 for African-Americans. Um, so with that, we have about 80 percent um, African Americans, 13 um, percent white, and um, less than three, well, under three percent, uh, just under three, almost three percent, uh, two or more races. Um, the demographics um, start to split out a little bit more among other groups. With ethnicity, uh, majority, as as is seen across the entire survey, uh, majority are those who identify as non-Hispanic. Regarding gender. Three-fourths of the respondents, black respondents, uh, identify as female, with the remaining being male. And the marital status is something that we're interested in seeing as well. Um, we saw that nearly half of respondents um, 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 reported as being married, with almost a quarter saying divorced, and just under 17% saying never married. Uh, we do also ask about widowed and also if you are a member of an unmarried couple, separated or if not listed um, above in these choices, um, in which case we started to see a, a big drop off when it came to who was responding from those areas. Second page here on demographics, we have educational attainment level. So as far as highest level of edu edu education attained, we have um, a tie actually um, for two positions. So um, I'll say 
actually we'll have um, almost three-fourths, let's say, are actually those who had attended some college or had completed college, a four-year degree, or had actually obtained a master's degree. With those attending college but not getting a degree and also those with a master's program tying for the top, uh, we have college graduates coming in at 22, almost 23%. Um, it starts to drop off where we look at technical, uh, those with technical and trade school certificates and also those who are part of a, the doctoral degree programs. As far as health status, uh, one thing we asked, just a general question about how respondents rated their own health. 40% um, said very good. It starts to drop down a little bit to 36.2% for good and excellent at 10%. Um, annual household income among black respondents, um, almost 30% was saying um, 75,000 or more in household. And we start to see a drop off um, when we get to under 75, between 50,000 and 75,000. And the third place would be those between 25 to 35,000 at 16.85%. Um, we had about 10% of those who had between zero to less than 20,000 um, comprising that group. Um, other demographics that I didn't mention here that we'll have um, more opportunities in the future to talk about is the breakdown between zip codes of where people are reporting, political ideology, so looking at do you lean towards a certain political group, sexual orientation, and also employment status. So before we get into the findings here, uh, one thing I, I wanted to pose was some reflection questions. So as we go through the data, you can kind of think about what the data means and also how it applies to you and your family. So one question to think about is what does this data mean to me? Um, how um, you know, also just thinking about just how useful it can be and also whatever data might be useful. Um, there's a lot of people who collect information out there and make publicly available. So it's good to consider about what would be useful as far as the information that might be needed to improve one's life. Uh, second question would be, how can these issues impact my health and well-being? So we'll get into specific topics that were in the responses. But just thinking about, again, whether you see the issues or not, there are topics that permeate all areas of our life and our families, our communities, society as a whole. So it's good to think about how those could directly or indirect affect your health and well-being throughout your entire lifespan. And the third question is, what, inf what resources do I have access to in these areas? So just thinking about tangible and intangible. Tangible, for example, would be things that you physically can see your access in the world. If we're talking about a building, if we're talking about um, a program or a class, um, those would be good examples. Um, as far as intangible, those would be like communication networks. Um, being able to um, have a network of people you can share information with um, to exchange ideas or to work on projects together. Um, that's a, another asset that we have to always consider when we're looking for solutions. So top findings, again, we're gonna cover only three domains. This is the very first one. So this one's called all issues. This is the kitchen tabletop issues. So um, healthcare was the number one priority uh, followed by affordable housing. Um, you'll see on the right-hand side, I have the top five responses and the top bottom responses from participants when it came to these issues. Um, these are gonna be ones that um, We'll, um, you'll see a little bit of a difference, not too much, but the way this worked as far as uh, how we asked this question is that we asked for ranking. So we gave these different topics and we asked for folks to rank them as uh, on a priority scale. So from not at all to highest priority and the highest priority are what these percentages are here. So you'll see that the uh, majority of um, over three fourths of, of, of respondents from the black respondent group actually said healthcare was one of the top. Um, same thing with affordable housing. So we have three fourths there. Um, as we kind of drop down, um, we have some other issues that aren't included here, but they'll fill in the gaps. So top five responses, we have healthcare being the highest priority, followed by affordable housing, criminal justice reform, ending racism, and safe communities. The bottom five responses are taxes, access to public transportation, immigration, climate change, and foreign policy. Um, with foreign policy having a big drop off compared to um, the one before it, um, the climate change from 35% down to just under 20%. Some of the issues that were in between, um, so we had some that were in between that 70 to 51% range, and this included access to voting, education, closing the wealth gap, community policing and relations, and access to credit and lending sources. 
Um, those that are below 50%, but not in that bottom five, include gentrification or involuntary displacement. Gun laws, national security, taxes, access to public transportation, um, and then again, uh, immigration, climate change, and foreign policy. So we get into those last five bottom there as well. Um, you know, again, thinking about these questions, um, you know, really thinking about how, you know, this data is useful to you and does it resonate with you? Is it something that you also feel are top priorities for you or maybe even low priorities? And then thinking about the different entities and resources that exist in the world that are in these domains. So kind of keeping in mind that um, there's a lot that contributes to these areas are very broad, um, but there's a lot of things that you could probably come up with a, a short list in your, in your own life of uh, things that will relate to how this impacts you and your family. Um, second domain we cover was healthcare issues. So for the top priority spot, we actually had that tied at healthcare affordability and quality of care. So top five responses, again, healthcare affordability, quality of care, followed by access to mental health care, access to healthcare, and racism in healthcare. Um, so you can kind of see how, you know, with along the, uh, the past slide, we actually had uh, healthcare being one of the top issues for folks um, as far as all issues go. And we can see that it, it resonates here with a lot of the specific healthcare issues um, when they're thinking about how it really impacts their health and well-being, um, not just thinking from a physical standpoint, but from a mental and psychological standpoint as well. As far as the bottom five responses, we have diversity of healthcare providers, transparency in healthcare billing, access to oral health care, such as access to a doctor, I mean, a dentist's office, Medicare for all plan, um, so looking at coverage, and also um, importance around um, um, their um, importance around uh, whether the Affordable Care Act should be repealed or not, um, also known as Obamacare. Another top finding here, we have um, disease and risk factors. So with this, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we could potentially put on a list, um, but there were some, some common ones that pop up in, in healthcare literature and also ones that we've just heard feedback around. We wanted to make sure that we were capturing accurately what folks were thinking about. So very top spot was actually tied uh, between two, again, COVID-19 and mental health. Uh, these are big two, these are two big themes that we've seen. Um, obviously for the coronavirus, we are still in a pandemic. Um, so um, that makes sense as far as that being a, a high risk uh, concern for folks. And then also mental health. Um, when we think about the stress that COVID has put on us, um, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like for us to really think that when we, when we look at these issues, we really have to kind of consider um, what's impacting us. And when we think about all issues, um, there's some things that impact us that kind of break down into health and healthcare. Um, for, for example, just thinking about the COVID-19 pandemic itself. Um, also thinking about how all our issues are prioritized based off of the fact that we are in a presidential election year. And also just considering the, um, the, um, the change in the landscape when it comes to uh, racial justice. Um, oh, I apologize. When it comes to health and health care, we really have to think more about now I'll go back on the slide just to make sure folks can see okay. Um, also make sure that, you know, we're thinking about the stressors in our daily lives, you know, when it comes to paying our mortgage and rent, or it comes to being able to get access to food, have physical safety. Um, these are all things that are always in our minds. And this year has definitely been challenging for us when it comes to dealing and um, uh, overcoming a lot of these issues in our lives. So something to consider. Um, when it comes to health and healthcare in particular, it's, it's, it's good to think about who impacts my level of health. Um, we all have control over our own lives, but we also have external factors that also contribute to our outcomes. Um, so some areas to think about when it comes to who impacts our health. Of course, we have ourselves, our family, our faith uh, and social circles. We also have community-based entities like schools, food banks, child care centers, libraries, rec centers, and family resource centers. We have those in the healthcare systems, such as our healthcare providers that you would find at a local healthcare clinic or even a larger health systems like you would find in hospitals. And also considering the impact that government officials have through policy, 
and the way that physical environment is set up for us. Um, in terms of physical environment, I think more specifically about some of those tangibles, such as parks, outdoor spaces that are safe, um, and also thinking about the walkability of streets and how that encourages physical activity and socializing, among others. When we go to this third domain here, we have disease and risk factors. Um, you know, so to go back over this, COVID-19 mental health tied for the biggest ones here. Um, some other issues that we um, covered was also cancer, homicide, hypertension, and stroke. Um, these kind of fill in between the top and bottom five responses. But to go over the top five, we have those first two, COVID and mental health. We have heart disease, physical activity and exercise, and diabetes. For the bottom five responses, we have obesity, so, um, substance abuse and addiction, HIV and AIDS, smoking and asthma. And again, these are, are the top priorities that folks uh, felt when they responded to the survey. Um, with disease and risk factors, it can be hard without some kind of understanding of how the body works and how the medicine, human medicine works without really understanding all the, rat, the risk factors that go into how we uh, form diseases. Um, but there's some things that you can think of um, outside of that, that expertise. So, you know, something that you should consider is, for example, family history. Uh, understanding where your family has been as far as these issues, um, who has what diseases, what outcomes have people experienced in the past um, is very beneficial. It's something that a lot of medical providers will make sure that they get up front is to understand um, what is your um, prevalence to be able to get some of the diseases based off of your family's history. Um, so if you're not too sure about what your family history looks like, that's something as a conversation starter that you should begin with. Understanding what kind of diseases um, and issues that um, other family members who are here and those who have passed have experienced in the past will be useful for you to understand where there might be some risk factors for yourself and your family. Um, more of the obvious choices is such as our lifestyle choices. So how we eat, exercise, and how do we de-stress. Um, another area to look at is your physical environment or neighborhood. So kind of like I mentioned with the walkability of streets, looking at where can you access healthy foods. Um, we have a lot of communities that live in food deserts. These are areas that don't have um, um, enough a range of healthy food sources that are close enough for folks to be able to get to and are most often um, affordable to, to be able to obtain. And then also thinking about environmental hazards, so such as living near manufacturing sites in industrial regions. Um, I know that in particular Colorado had gone through quite a few different wildfires this summer and um, environmental hazards has definitely been on a big issue when it comes to air quality control for us. So, again, going back to the reflection questions, you know, what does this data mean to me? How can these issues impact my health and well-being? And what resources do I have access to? Um, these are very important to think about when it comes to just living daily life, but also just strategizing the health and well-being of your family in the long term. Um, you know, understanding a little bit more about data is important. Um, no one has to necessarily be an expert, but you have to know a little bit about what audiences are being asked questions and what that data really means to uh, you as far as the implications of it. And I would say, you know, keeping in mind resources, there's a lot of ways you can define resources, um, but starting with some of the ones that are in your neighborhood are a good way to go. Also starting to have communication with, with your neighbors, with other family members around what are some things they do to help resolve issues that they experience. It's a great way to start to point yourself in that direction of where health classes and programs might be, where you might be able to find free or low cost assistance with getting some of the, uh, the more basic needs like food, shelter, and physical security. And, you know, thinking about how do you access those resources? Um, you know, with networking, a lot of times word of mouth is a great way to be able to understand who to talk to and how to get connected. So utilize those in your life that are connected to some of these resources already as a way to get in and be able to access them for your own benefit as well. Um, be sure to reciprocate, you know, share this out with other folks and let them know that that's something as well that you can help um, contribute to their lives. 
So um, towards the end of here at this PowerPoint, do want to say, you know, um, tell you a little bit more about an opportunity that we have. So the Be Here Colorado project, um, we have some more um, opportunities to talk more in depth about it, but I'll give you kind of an overview. So it's an advocacy and leadership opportunity for Black, African, and African-American community members. It's a way you can share information between organizations, between yourselves, a way to discuss ideas and solutions to issues that actually matter to you, and to receive training and opportunities to apply those skills. We do have two upcoming webinars um, that we would like to, um, to mention here. Um, the webinars are a way that we can get further into this project. So um, one thing, some of the things we'll cover in the webinar here, it's going to be findings for all the domains that are mentioned here in the health priority survey. Uh, we just, just touched the skin of, uh, of this. Um, it's, uh, we have a lot of uh, opportunities to talk a little bit more about how deep the data goes. Um, uh, on top of that, after looking at the data, we can actually start to talk about some of those results and findings and use that as a way to share ideas um, with other motivated community members. Um, great way to voice yourself and be able to say, this is what matters to me, um, to talk about how some of the things that were reported in the survey might also be top priorities for you. And then also just to learn how to actually get involved in the project. Uh, the webinars are really informational. They're an opportunity for you to be able to uh, learn about the project, get engaged with each other and with us to understand if maybe we're asking the right or wrong questions. Um, and then you'll get an opportunity to actually figure out how to actually get further into the process of getting into the program. So the dates. So the dates actually, the first one actually is today. It's this evening. Um, we send out um, communications um, through our email list, through partners, social media accounts. Um, so if you haven't seen that, um, you know, unfortunately the registration is closed for today's session. Um, but we do have one last one here on, on Saturday morning. That's gonna be October 10th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, today is the last day to register for it. So I did and provide the link here, and I also will have that here in the Facebook chat so you guys are able to click on it. Um, just go on to our Eventbrite page and you'll be able to register for it. Um, you know, register before 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. Um, that, that's when they will close as far as us being able to get you in for Saturday's session. And then finally, just here, we just have a page here just to kind of help with you getting connected to us. Um, because of COVID, like many, we have the pivot to doing um, online connections. So, um, you can visit us online. Um, you can always call us as well. Um, we're able to still be able to um, reach back out to you if you were able to call our main office number here. It's going to be 303-355-3423. Uh, visit our website. We have a listing of all of our events, all of our programs, um, and, our, and information about the staff at work here and, and the different backgrounds and expertise that they bring. Um, visit us at www.caahealth.org. Um, we also have various social media accounts that we're active on. We have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, in particular, I encourage you guys to check out Facebook like you are today and also check out our YouTube. All of our videos from our web series have been archived on both of those platforms. So you can always go back, you can comment, um, you can um, be able to share that as well with others that might find the information useful. We cover many topics um, that impact our health. Um, so there's always, there's going to be something that I'm sure will interest you in, in the terms of um, learning more and getting connected. If you have any questions about this survey or about the project itself, feel free to contact me. My email here is uh, listed below. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so that what we can do here is look and see some of the questions that we have before we close out. So, the question here, um, did you learn what the, specific, what the community's specific concerns about healthcare and criminal justice reform, reform were? So, no, so we didn't ask specifically about uh, what areas within, uh, what specifics are within that area. Um, it was really a way to just kind of getting a pulse check on what was important to folks. Um, that is something that we're doing through the Be Here Colorado project is that we're actually able to dive deeper into these specific areas and ask about what aspects of them is a, an issue or an opportunity for community to be able to grow through. Um, Be Here Colorado um, continues to do surveys. I'm Be Here, sorry, I apologize. Be Here Mile High continues to do surveys around these topics. Um, so these are things that can specifically be dedicated to a, a single survey as well. Um, but the Be Here Colorado project, we are going to dive more into that. Uh, this is just an, a, a way of just being able to see a little bit more 
about what areas were important to folks so that we can start to drill down further into that. And another question we have is, if someone, if someone wants to take part in future surveys, how would they get on your list? So that is something that you can do by visiting our website at beheardmilehigh.org. I did put it in the chat here, so you feel free, you guys can always access it by just clicking on the link. Um, with that is the short questionnaire um, to get you enrolled. And this is a way that we can start to get your contact information, but also in, in some of the demographics. So we'll ask things like age, race, and ethnicity. We'll ask about your education level. We'll ask if you have children in the household that you're a parent, uh, a guardian, or even a caregiver of. And it'll be a, be a way to kind of get a baseline information about you. And then every month you'll start to get those surveys sent to you um, based off of how you would like. We can either mail it to you, to your physical address, we can send it to you by email, or we can text them at the survey to you as well. So we are at 12.30. Um, I do wanna say I have some other questions prepared, so I'll briefly go through them just to give you guys a little bit more um, um, content around what we're talking about here and the point of this webinar. Um, so some people might ask, you know, how can I decide what to focus on when it comes to these health priorities? Um, good general advice really is just to prioritize the most important needs first. Again, shelter, food, and physical safety. Um, you know, start to develop goals for yourself and for your household that you can work on in a short term and long term. And short term could be things that you could accomplish within a week, could take a couple weeks or months. Long term, again, thinking years to decades to maybe even lifetime goals. Um, try to share roles in your goals. Get people to start to endorse the work you do by being involved in it and support each other with your time, your energy, and your talents. Uh, remember to practice physical and mental self-care during this time. Um, and that can be free and easy. Uh, with stay-at-home measures, I know that it can be intimidating to go outside, um, but there are ways that you can still do that safely during the pandemic and be able to practice that kind of self-care. So I encourage everybody to do that and look for opportunities in which they can get others to help them in a safe manner. Um, another question um, that pops up is how can my social or faith circles help improve my health and well-being? Um, you know, just kind of like um, with, you know, getting other people who are like-minded, you know, you guys can share resources, you guys can sh you know, change ideas, you can work together to actually set up events and complete tasks that will actually help improve those areas of your life. Um, specifically, you know, learn about the services that your social and your faith circles have. Um, get connected to them, to the resources, and to their networks. Um, and always try to find a warm um, handoff. You know, try to get people who you know to introduce you to others so that you can find an easier way to make that connection. Um, something to point out, many church and faith groups, um, churches and faith groups, they have health ministries and online platforms, um, you know, health ministries that you can um, get more information and resources from. And then also online platforms that you see, um, mainly the, the main social media platforms. So there's a variety of different uh, opportunities for you guys to, for you to join other folks. Um, and this is something that's always been here before and, you know, and now during the COVID pandemic. Um, I say utilize those. It's a great way to get connected um, and to also to achieve some of your own personal goals. And uh, finally, before we wrap up, um, I always like to mention some words of encouragement. Um, these are tough times, um, it, but it presents an opportunity to become tougher, resourceful, and more connected people. Uh, take time to reflect on what's important to you, your family, and your community. Think about what resources or ideas are available to you so that you can learn from them and make plans to take action on them immediately and wherever possible. Uh, changes can seem scary, especially in this time, but remember, when the vision is very clear, it's easier to pay the price. So I know we're over at time. Um, um, I wanna thank you guys for joining me today to look over some of the findings from the survey. Um, and we hope that you continue to consider what this type of data means to you and all the factors that connect to your health and well-being throughout your lifetime, uh, no matter where you are. Uh, this video will be available along with other information on the center's website at caahealth.org. Um, again, thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, join us next week for Facebook Live Lunch and Learn as we continue the month of October with an important conversation around breast cancer awareness. Thank you. Hope you guys have a great day.